Hey YouTube, this is Primetime Pokemon, and today I'm going to review a Heart Gold Soul Silver Undaunted theme deck. This has Espeon on it, and as you can see, I've already unpackaged everything inside of it. I actually was in the middle of making a previous video, and then I opened up the deck and saw that the cards are all out of order, so then I took the time to or reorganize them so they're in order when I talk about it in the deck review. So like always, I'll give this deck away once I get done reviewing it. Um, I'm going to keep the booster pack for myself, and I'll open that in a later video but what you'll be getting is you'll be getting the box I'll fold that up I'll get you get the deck box like this which you can put all 60 cards in you'll be getting the totodile coin the playing mat the card list and the rule book and then the damage counters burn marker and poison marker and if you're unsure how to play the Pokemon trading card game I do have a series of videos out on YouTube explaining how to play the game so like always, I'm going to turn the, so this theme deck is called Daybreak. It is a psychic and grass type deck. There's only two de two types of energies in this deck, unlike the last couple of decks I reviewed where there's been three. I'll read the strategy on the back of the box to you and then sort of analyze the cards, how they fit this strategy. It says, you'll use every trick under the sun to defeat your opponent when you play the Daybreak theme deck. The versatile sludge Pokemon Muck both inflicts special conditions on your opponent's Pokemon and then adds on damage to those already affected. And when the Sun Pokemon Espeon begins to move damage counters from your Pokemon across the battlefield to your opponent's Pokemon, it will dawn on your opponent just how versatile your Daybreak deck really is. So it looks like Muck and Espeon are the two major players in this deck. And as you can see, Here's a deck list on the back. I'll be uh, looking at this and then showing you the cards in the deck to make sure, you know, that they're the right amount. And then I'll explain all the trainers, stadium cards, supporters, and Pokemon. So, by looking on the back of the box, there should be 10 grass energy cards and then 8 psychic energy cards. So, I'll count off 10 to make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then eight psychic energy cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now a lot of people do ask me what's the best way to get energy cards, and it's definitely to buy these theme decks. You always just look on the side of the box, like this, and it says what types of Pokemon are inside, and then on the back you can look and see, oh there's eight psychic energy and ten grass energy. So if you're trying to build your own deck, um, you can just buy a theme deck and get the necessary type of energy. So the first trainer card in this deck is called Energy Exchanger. And there are two of these in the deck. And I'll read it to you. You can use as many trainer cards as you want per turn. It says, choose an energy card from your hand. Show it to your opponent and put it on top of your deck. Search your deck for an energy card. Show it to your opponent and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. So this is basically what the name means, Energy Exchanger. So if you're have a grass type Pokemon as your active Pokemon and you need a grass energy card attached to that you can take a psychic energy card attach or a psychic energy card in your hand put it on the top of your deck when you use this card you lay this card down you put the psychic energy card on top of your deck look for a grass energy card put it in your hand and then shuffle your deck and then you can put that grass energy card out on your active Pokemon so there's two of those there are two Pokeball trainers. Now, this is where you just flip a coin and then search your deck for a Pokemon if you get a heads and you flip the coin. So 50-50 chance you can search your deck. This is a good way to get evolution cards out there, too. So if you want to evolve Eevee into Espeon, you can search your Espeon with these cards, that type of thing. The next trainer there is, there are two Life Herb trainers in this deck. These are pretty good. It's also a 50-50 chance. Um, if you get a heads when you flip a coin, you remove all special conditions and six damage counters from a Pokemon of your choosing. So basically it removes 60 damage from that Pokemon, so it can really do a lot if you use this card. So there's only two of these, two of those, and there's a stadium card. This is the first stadium card I've reviewed in a theme deck so far. Stadium cards, um, once you play these, they stay in play and they affect both you and your partners. So if you put this in play, your opponent can use this and you can use this. And then if your opponent puts a different stadium card in or you decide to put a different stadium card in, then you have to discard this card. 
So this stadium card is called Ruins of Elf, and it says that each Pokemon ha in play has no resistance. So if you have this deck and you know, let's see, no resistance. So that is actually pretty decent. You'd want to play this card if you know your opponent has a resistance to the type of Pokemon that you use. So maybe you know that a very popular type of deck is maybe say electric type deck and the electric type de deck's resistance is I'm not I'm blanking on what it is. I think it might be fighting but I'm not sure so if you have a fighting deck you know that you want to use this card and then you can do the full amount of damage. So there's just the one stadium card I actually don't use stadium cards too much, cause, but there are stadium cards out there that really can help you out. They're big in play nowadays, but if you know the type of Pokemon that you're going to go against, if a type of Pokemon is really strong, really popular, I mean, and it has a resistance to the type of Pokemon you're using in your deck, you definitely want to include a Ruins of Elf stadium card. Now we're going to the supporters. There's would be... Two Team Rockets Trickery. You can play supporter cards once per turn. It says it just says draw two cards. Then your opponent discards a card from his or her hand. So I know I've had Bills and uh, Cheerleaders Cheer cards, supporter cards in previous decks. This card is definitely better in my opinion because you get to draw two cards and then your opponent discards a card from his or her hand. The only bad thing about this is, well, not really bad, but. I wish you'd be able to discard a card for them, but they get to choose which card they want to discard. So they'll probably, I'm sure they'll discard their worst card, but still it get rid of, gets rid of one of your opponent's cards, so which is very helpful. So there's actually two, I believe, two Team Rockets trickeries. I must have. Yep, I'm sure it's right there. Yep, I just messed it, messed it up a little bit. So there's a two. The next supporter, like I was talking about, interviewers questions. Oh, this is a little different. Um, this lets you look at the top eight cards of your deck, choose as many energy cards as you like, show them to your opponent, and put them into your hand. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck. I really like this supporter card because if you're using a Pokemon that has a lot of energy um, card cost to it when you would need to attack, this card can get a lot of energy cards into your hand, and you'll never not be able to do, attach one energy card per turn if you have a lot of energy cards in your hand. So there's two interviewers questions and then there's two sages training supporter cards. So this one says look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose any two cards you find there and put them into your hand. Discard the other cards. So this card is more um, this one is what I was thinking about when I read that interviewer's questions where you look at the top five cards of your deck, choose any two, and then discard the rest. Now, I, I would use this card with a, another trainer card that lets you look through your discard pile, but since this is only a theme deck, you can't really do that as well. But it could be useful. I mean, you look at your fop, top five cards, and if you're looking for energy, you're more, more than likely going to have one energy card in that top five, or if you're looking for a basic Pokemon, you're more than likely going to have a one of those cards in your top five. So now we're going to move on to the Pokemon. I did separate these to start with. I separated them to colorless right away. There's quite a few colorless Pokemon in this deck. That way they can utilize both the psychic and the grass energy. And then there's grass, only a couple grass Pokemon and then a couple psychic Pokemon. So we'll start out with the colorless. We have Doduo, which is a basic Pokemon. And you can see up here, colorless or normal type Pokemon. Has the two moves. The standard 10 damage for one energy. And then the second move, double head strike. Two colorless energy cards. Does 50 damage. But the, the only bad thing about this is it says that either of, if either of them is tails, this attack does nothing. So you have a 75% chance of this move not being able to do anything at all. Which... I really wouldn't even use that card then if you have a 75% chance of not doing anything at all. I'd probably stick with Peck and then try to evolve it into Dodrio as fast as possible. And since there's only two Doduos in this deck, I mean, you might not actually even play with it if you play in the game. Like I was saying, there's one Dodrio card evolves from Doduo, stage one, only 80 HP, so a little lower HP than what I would have liked, but it does have a Poke Body, which is called Retreat Aid. 
and it says, as long as Dodrio is on your bench, your active Pokemon's retreat cost is two colorless energy cards less. So I'd be willing to bet that almost every card in this deck has two energy card retreat costs or less. So basically by putting Dodrio on your bench, all of your Pokemon will have free retreat costs, which can be very helpful. I definitely put this card on, on my bench as soon as possible. So I'd use um, Pokeball to find both Doduo and Dodrio. And if I had to use interviewers questions and um, Team Rocket's Trickery as well as Sage's Training so almost all the supporters all let you draw cards and have a better chance of getting Dodrio. So that's a really good card especially to have on your bench with that Poke Body. You can use it every turn. So it basically just has it's always in effect. You never have to say oh, I'm going to use Retreat Ed. It's just always in effect in effect so you know you always have free reshoot costs basically because I'll look through I'll make sure and look it through the cards and if anything I'm sure they all the only thing that might have a higher retreat cost is Muck and uh, Togetic I think but Togekiss probably we'll take a look at it the next one is Rattata Rattata and it has and there's two Rattata in the stack and two Raticate so two two line not a very good well it has a low HP but it has a good move for one energy card, 20. So this could be a good starting Pokemon. Um, very fast, does a fair amount of damage since most basic Pokemons do 10 damage for one energy card. This is 20. So there's two of those, and there's two Raticate. And Raticate is a stage one, another Pokemon with 80 HP, so a little lower than average, but it has two moves. The first one is called Razor Sharp, Razor Sharp and Scissors. And that does 10 damage times the number of damage counters on the defending Pokemon. So you'd want to keep this on your bench and use another Pokemon that does a lot of damage. And since you have free retreat costs, if you have um, retreat aid from Do Do Dodrio on your bench, that can retreat for free. Or the active Pokemon can retreat and then Raticate can go out there and then do razor sharp sciz and scissors and if the defending Pokemon has 60 damage on it can do 60 damage for only one colorless energy card and since it does have free retreat costs you don't even necessarily have to have Dodrio on your bench to retreat it for free but I, like I was saying I'd always have Dodrio on your on your bench so you'd have free retreat costs the next Pokemon is Togepi and there is a what 2-2-1 two, two, line of Togepi, Togetic, and Togekiss so look at it, Togepi's basic Pokemon, colorless still, HP of 40, just has the one move, is called Plead. It says, ask your opponent if you may draw two cards. If yes, draw two cards. If no, this attack does 20 damage to the defending Pokemon. So this card is just very similar to Rattata, even better actually, because it makes your opponent decide if it wants to do damage or if you want to draw two cards. And if I was using Togepi or anything, drawing two cards could get that stage one Pokemon card so you could evolve a card the next turn or that sim same turn. So this is a pretty decent basic Pokemon card. I wish it was a little higher HP but you can evolve it twice so this isn't much of a problem especially if you can get it on your bench right away. Togetic is next. This is another stage one colorless Pokemon with 80 HP. So all the stage ones I've reviewed so far are 80 HP in this deck. It has two moves, again one colorless energy card, so if you have Dodrio on your bench it'll have free retreat costs. Chase up is the first move, it says search your deck for any one card and put it into your hand, shuffle your deck, af deck afterward. So here's another move right here that can get evolutions out, especially if you have Do Togetic as your active Pokemon and you don't have Togekiss in your hand yet, you can use this card the first time and then get Togekiss. Um, you can evolve it that turn, or the next turn, because you'd have to use this move to get to Togekiss, and then the next move you'd be able to evolve it into Togekiss and attack with Togekiss. The second move was Fly, and this does 30 damage for only two colorless energy cards, and it says to flip a coin. If Tails, this attack does nothing. If Heads, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to Togetic during your ne opponent's next turn. So this does have a 50% chance of not doing anything, but it does have also have the 50% chance of preventing all attacks. And since Togetic only has 80 HP, that prevention of all attacks, including damage, might actually be very beneficial. But I, would, I wouldn't I would ever even use this move 
because I definitely use Chase up first and then just evolve into Togekiss, which has 120 HP. So that's what I would do with that. Now we're going to show Togekiss, and like I was saying, this only has one colorless energy retreat cost, so I'm pretty sure this whole deck has lower retreat costs. So you'd be able to use Dodrio's Pokebody and have this have free retreat costs. It's a stage 2 Pokemon card. Like I was saying, I'd use Chase up to get it, uh, evolve it, to find this card in your deck and then evolve it right away. And also you could use Pokeball if you really wanted, but I definitely stick with using Chase up and then evolving to Togetic into Togekiss the next turn. It has two moves, Togetic Togekiss does. Blessed Wings, um, it takes two colorless energies, and it says remove all damage counters from each of your Pokemon. Shuffle Togekiss and all cards attached to it back into your deck. That is really, really good right there. So, especially with a free retreat cost, you can retreat, uh, go back and forth all the time. That is a really good move right there. This is what you want to do. You want to get Dodrio out on your bench, so this free retreat cost. You want to attack with whatever Pokemon you have out there until they have maybe 10, 10 or 20 damage left. Retreat it for free, move another Pokemon in, and then do the same thing. Once it gets a lot of damage, retreat it. And then when almost all of your Pokemon on your bench have a lot of damage on it, um, get Togekiss out there. And it's pretty easy to get out since you only need Togetic, and then you can use Chase Up and then get Togekiss the next turn and use Blessed Wings, Blessed Wings, and remove all damage from all of your Pokemon. And then it'll be just like you started over, started the game over, except for all that Pokemon are evolved already, more than likely, that are on your bench. And then you can have a chance to use Tog Togekiss again because you shuffle it into your deck. Now, since you can do this, I would refrain from using too many supporters and trainer cards right away because if you can um, shuffle Togekiss back into your deck, you might want to use the trainers then to get Togekiss. So that's a really good card right there. That's a good card to have in your deck. You really want to get Togekiss out there. Now we're going to do the Grass Pokemon. We have a 2-1 two, two, line of Oddish, Gloom, and Blossom. So you have two Oddish, and it's a Grass-type Pokemon. 40 HP, so low HP again, but since you can remove all damage with um, Togekiss, it doesn't really matter as much. It has a normal 10 damage for one energy card, and then it also has a find a friend. It says flip a coin. If heads, search your deck for a grass Pokemon, show it to your opponent, and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterward. So, you could use this two ways. If you don't care as much about if an Oddish is knocked out, or if you can want to retreat it right away, you can use find a friend, and if you get the heads, you can either, I would do, I would put muck in your hand, but if you want to keep Oddish out there, I would find gloom or blossom, and that way you can evolve it the next turn. So that's not a bad, actually, basic Pokemon card. Um, gloom would be the stage one evolution of Oddish. It has 80 HP, so along with the theme of lower HP for the stage one Pokemon. It doesn't have any Poke Powers or Poke Bodies. It just has a one move called Miracle Powder, which takes two color, uh, two energy cards, one colorless and one grass, and does 30 damage. It also says flip a coin. If heads, choose one special condition. The defending Pokemon is now affected by that special condition. So that's very good right there. What I would recommend would be to use poison on it. Probably be my my special condition of choice. But just depending on the um, type of situation you're in. I also have videos on YouTube that explain the different special conditions. So if you're not sure which ones do what, make sure you check it, ch watch those videos. But there's going to be two glooms, and then there's a blossom. So you can use the Pokeballs to get to blossom faster. Or you can use the supporter cards that let you draw cards from your deck and hopefully you draw a Blossom. But it's a stage 2 Pokemon card with 110 HP, which is a little low for a stage 2. It's Poke Power. I'll talk about that second. But I'll talk about Dance Till Dawn as its only move. It takes two energy cards, a Grass and a Colorless Energy. It does 30 damage times the number of heads you get when you flip three coins. So it could do a maximum of 90 damage for two energy cards, which is quite good. Um, it's Poke Power, 
is called Hustle Step, and it says once before, once during your turn, you may remove one damage counter from each of your Pokemon. So this is quite similar to Togekiss almost, except for Togekiss doesn't have a Poke Power. Its move is actually to remove all damage. So this is somewhat redundant in my opinion, that you can re remove one damage counter from each of your Pokemon. But at the same time, you don't necessarily have to use Togekiss then if you can remove one damage counter every turn. That way I get Blossom on my bench. So I'd have Blossom on my bench and Dodrio on my bench and be able to use both the Poke Body and the Poke Bower and have free retreat costs and then remove one damage counter from each of your Pokemon each turn. But the only bad thing is you probably can only use this one turn because you have to you're asleep the next turn unless you wake up. So that's where you could use Life Herb to get Blossom um, awake that turn. So next we have two Scyther, which are just basic Pokemon, 60, so that's a little better um, HP for a basic Pokemon. Grass type, and it just says one move. After Image Strike does takes two colorless energy cards, does 20 damage, and it says during your opponent's next turn, if Scyther would be damaged by an attack, flip a coin. If heads prevent that attack by it tax damage done to Scyther. So this is a card that if you got it out there right away and you got two energy cards on it, it could allow you to build up your bench because your opponent might not be able to do any damage to Scyther. It might be able to last three, four turns if you're facing another basic Pokemon out there and you'd be able to attach some energy to, to your bench Pokemon and evolve some of your bench Pokemon while Scyther is out there. Now we're going to the Psychic Pokemon. Um, Muck and Espeon are the main two Pokemon in this deck. So we're going to look at Muck first, but we're going to start with Grimer, which is a basic Pokemon. 60 HP. It's a good HP again. It has two moves. The first is called Sticky Liquid, and it says during your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon's retreat cost is one colorless energy more. So I could see using this with like a Steelix from the deck I reviewed before that has four colorless energy card retreat costs. If you use this card, five colorless energy retreat costs, that's a lot of energy to waste if you try and retreat it. So you might be able to use this move first and then evolve it into Muck the next turn and be able to do a lot more damage. I'm not sure what moves are on Muck yet, but I'm assuming it's more than does more than 20 damage, which Grammar's second move, Sludge Toss, does, which isn't bad at all for a basic Pokemon card. So there's two Grimer and then two Muck. Now I do notice on here that Muck has a retreat cost of three colorless energy cards so if you have Dodrio on your bench and use Retreat Aid which is its Poke Body, um, Muck will have a retreat cost of one colorless energy card instead of free like I said. So every Pokemon except for Muck, if you have Dodrio on your bench, will have free retreat cost except for Muck. Like I was saying, it'll have one colorless energy card retreat cost. So now we're going to review Muck. Two cards in the deck. It's a stage one psychic type Pokemon card with 100 HP, which is a little better than normal. Um, it does have that high retreat cost like I was saying. But its first move is called Sludge Drag, and for one Psychic Energy card, it says switch to the Defending Pokemon with one of your opponent's Bench Pokemon. The new Defending Pokemon is now Confused and Poisoned. And then its second move is called Pester, and this takes three Energy cards, two Colorless and one Psychic, and it does 50 damage. Plus, if the Defending Pokemon is affected by a special condition, this attack does 80 damage instead of 50. So, I would definitely... Use Sludge Drag first, if I had Muck out there, and switch to Defending Pokemon with a weak Pokemon that has less than 80, 80 or less damage, and then use Pester the next turn, and it'll automatically do 80 damage because it has a special condition affected to it. That's what I do with Muck. Now we just have Eevee and Espeon left. We have four Eevee. It's a colorless Pokemon. Um, 50 HP. The first one is a Call for Family move takes one colorless energy card and says search your deck for basic Pokemon and put it onto your bench. Shuffle your deck afterward. So I guess the only time I would actually use this move is if I didn't have any 
basic Pokemon on my bench at all and was would be really close to losing the game, I would use that move. But more than likely, I would try and use one of the supporters to draw a bunch of cards at a time to see if I get a basic Pokemon that way. And then its second move is called Tickle, which does 10 damage, and you have a 50% chance of making the defending Pokemon paralyzed. So overall, Eevee's not too great of a card, but you need it to get Espeon out there. So there's four Eevees, and then there's two Espeons in the deck. One's from that front card that you get on the front of the deck, so that special holographic pattern, and then one's just a regular Espeon card, with just a regular rare. Um, Espeon is a stage one Pokemon card, has 90 HP, which is um, right average for a stage one Pokemon. It has two moves, and it says, for the first one, it says, move up to four damage counters from any of your Pokemon to any of your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. So this could be very useful since Dodrio has a Pokebody where it has basically free retreat costs for every Pokemon in the play except for Muck. That way you can get a lot of damage on your active Pokemon, move them to the bench, and dole out those damage counters to your opponent's Pokemon. And then if you still have a lot of damage on your own Pokemon, you can use Togekiss eventually and then just remove all damage counters. So this deck really works well together of moving damage from your side to your opponent's side or removing damage altogether from all of your Pokemon. And since it has free retreat costs, um, it's easy to retreat damaged Pokemon. Um, its second move is called Psybeam and this does 30 damage for two energy cards and it, you also flip a coin if heads, heads the defending Pokemon is now confused. So what I have noticed about this deck too is that it does a lot of special conditions. Psybeam on Espeon confuses the Pokemon. Blossoms um, let's see, not Blossom, it was what other moves? It was Miracle Powder from Gloom. Um, you can choose one special condition. And then Muck, I believe. Where is Muck? Up there. You can um, inflict them. You can poison and confuse them. So three cards in this deck can inflict special conditions. So that's very useful as well. So overall, I really do like this deck. It's a lot better than what I've reviewed the last couple of decks. Um, you can definitely, definitely, if you use your supporters and trainers the right way, be able to last a long time and do a lot of damage. Though that's the only bad thing that I did notice that none of these Pokemon, except for Muck, really can really do a lot of damage. Um, can do a lot of damage at once. But since we have free retreat costs and you can remove damage very easily, over time you will be able to win the games against many opponents. So definitely this deck is something to think about buying. I'm going to be reviewing the Umbreon deck. That'll be my next deck that I review. So thanks for listening to me review the Daybreak theme deck. In order to win this theme deck, you need to do the following things. You need to subscribe to me on YouTube and then follow me on my blog. And once you're a follower of me on my blog, and the link to my blog is in the underbar below on this video, um, you just go to here, click follow, and then follow me. There's already, it looks like, 12, uh, 1,248 followers. And sometime in the next two weeks, I'm going to post something in um, the card review, which I do these card reviews daily, that says the first person to comment with their YouTube username in, in the comment section below the card review um, will win the deck. So, I'm not sure what day I'll um, tell you when you can win the deck in the card reviews, but just make sure you're reading my card reviews and you're following me on my blog probably um, real steadily for the next two weeks because once the next two weeks I'll indicate in the text of my card review um, what you need to do to win um, the SBN theme deck. So make sure you follow me um, and make sure you stay tuned for all my other videos on YouTube. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.